Well, I got my two fro's out here, and uh, I'm going to show you how to sharpen a fro. Uh, okay, that's all there is to that. Because <laughs> you don't sharpen a fro. <laughs> But, <laughs> hit a little joke there. But, uh, yeah, because, you know, there's an old saying uh, that I've heard my whole life around here is, that, you know, uh, if something's dull, it's dull as a fro. Uh, and a fro's just kept dull. That's all there's to it. You just don't sharpen them. But sometimes, one, is you got to know what you're buying when you go look at some old ones, because there's old ones all over the place. And uh, uh, the old ones are made with, with tapers from top to bottom and slightly convex sides. And... If you want to see why, you can go to my videos on using the fro, and I explain that. Uh, Pete Galbert has a real good video on that, and showing how that fro will, 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 will rock on that convex side, and that enables you to rive with it, and the rive is a controlled split, and that's what you want. The fro is much more than a wedge. If it was just a wedge, you wouldn't need to invent it a fro. You know, the wedge would, would, would do the job, but with the fro, you have, you have control and those convex sides give you, give you that control. So those are really important. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't like the ones that are straight on the sides and then just ground to a bevel down, uh, up down here. And, and in the old ones, you never found that. So when you're looking for one, I mean, almost any of them do. Uh, I mean, they've been used and abused, and they're still good, useful tools. Uh, make sure that the forge weld is, is in good shape. Uh, if somebody's been hitting it with a metal hammer up here, like somebody hit that one with it, which that somebody was me when I was about 20 years old and didn't know what I was doing, but uh, you can you can just file that out. Fro is soft metal, so you can file it out. You always want to hit it with a wooden wooden club. Uh, dogwood's a wood of choice around here if that's what you got, but anything to do. And uh, and then if you you know if you've got obvious problems down here, you'd want to straighten it out with a file. But other than that, there's really not too much uh, to these things. This is one that I bought. This one came from my great granddad right here. Uh, but this is one that I bought at the flea market probably 25 years ago. And uh, I thought, oh, that's a nice little fro. I need one like that. And I'll get home and I'll replace that handle. It's been 25 years and I still haven't replaced that handle. But I'm, I'm going to do it sometime. It's just a branch. And, uh, but this is, once again, this is, a, this is what typically you would find there. This is a little bit smaller than you would find, and that's a little bit larger. Usually they're a little halfway in, uh, in between. But they all taper from top to bottom, uh, and they've just got those slight convex sides to them. So, uh, so that's what you're, you're going to look for. Well, I'll tell you about my wedges here. I've got, I've got two out here. This is a, a stave wedge for, I guess, traditionally it was used for splitting out uh, barrel staves. See how wide it is and kind of thinner. And this is just a typical wedge you'd find at a hardware store. Uh, now there's a little bit of difference in these wedges and what they were whenever I got them. Uh, they, when I got them, they had a blunt bevel down at the tip. It's very hard to get that started into, into the wood. So, what you want to do is uh, take your wedges to your blacksmith friend and have them hammer that out. So you see the shape that that's got now? It's got one continuous taper all the way up to the end. And then they can also uh, hammer off the little shrapnel that gets on the mushroom top of that thing that can fly off and do some damage to you while they're, while they're at it. And this one's starting to flare again as you can see so pretty soon I need to take that back to the blacksmith and have him just hammer that off. You could grind it off or whatever you want to do. There's a lot of grinding there unless you've got commercial grinding stuff which I don't. I'd never try to grind those things off on my little my little grinder but you know you can see here where that's been hammered out and it's just this nice continuous taper very easy to get started into into the log so you're not constantly picking up the wedge that's falling out when you're trying to get it going. So, uh, so that's, about, that's about it on, on wedges. I hit my wedges with a, with a metal hammer just because you get just much more impact. Uh, the more safety conscious might want to just use a wooden one and you're not going to mushroom it too when you do that.